Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you guys, hopefully, how to create an effective layout from ArcGIS. Um, this is ideally sort of aimed at people who are fairly new to ArcGIS and don't really know how to create an effective layout, and those who have perhaps not done it in a while and want a bit of a refresher. I'm going to start off by showing you the kinds of things that you need to put in your output, and then I'm going to go on to show you some some of my examples of some of my coursework so you get a good idea of what makes a good and a bad map. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is a completed map. Okay, this is my completed map and I want to display this nicely in an output. So the first thing you want to, going to do is switch from data view to layout view. You do this either by going to view and switching to layout view at the top here from data view or you can use these two little switches underneath the table of contents. Okay, once you're in the layout view, you have to set out a, set out how you want to display your map. Um, there are some key things that you need to include. Firstly, you're going to want your map itself, exactly how you want to present it, and you're going to want to adjust it so it's the main focus, so it's big and in the center of the page. Uh, as well as that, you're going to need a title explaining what exactly the map showing. Uh, little tip, don't write map showing. Um, people know it's a map, just just explain what it's showing rather than explaining that it's a map. Uh, you're going to need a north arrow to show which direction north's in. Um, scale bar so people know what scale the map's on. Uh, a legend so people know you know what categories you've used and what they mean. And uh, some other supporting information such as scale information, projection information, source information, that kind of thing. And if it's a standalone map, you're going to want to put like a bit of a bit of a description of what it's about. Um, all of the things that you'll need to add are found in the insert menu at the top. So title, neat lines for creating borders, legend, north arrow scale bar, etc. It's all in there. Um, play around with it. There's loads of different ones you can you can choose. Choose what's what what suits your style. Everyone's gonna have their own preferences. Choose choose what looks good to you. Um yeah. So the first thing we're gonna to want to do is we're gonna to, gonna to want to resize our map. It's quite small in the middle of the screen here, so we're gonna to want to make it bigger. Um you don't do this by dragging the box. That only just extends the size of the data frame. The way you um, and then zoom in on it is to use the zoom and pan features here. So we'll zoom in on it by drawing a box around it and move it to where we want using the pan tool. So as you can see that sort of fills the page now and is much more useful. Uh, like I said it's down to you how you present it. People are going to like different things but there's some key things you should always look out for when you're putting a map together. Firstly you've got to get the colour scheme right. Uh, the colours should represent either what each of the categories are, say it's um, say for like woodlands you could use green, water, blue, that kind of thing. And if it's just a map of figures, um, a good one to use is this a traffic light system like I've used here. Green is low, red is high. It's easy to understand, easy for people to interpret and understand. Um, yeah, another another tip is that when people look at a map, they tend to read it like they would a block of text. They look at it from left to right, top to bottom. So you want to try and gear your map to to this effect almost. So you don't want things like the north arrows, sorry, the north arrows. Um, in the top right or the top left, you want it sort of out of the way towards the right hand side. Things you want on the top, the top left are your title and you want your legend on the left hand side as well, ideally. I mean, it's, sometimes it's difficult to get all these things in the right place, just have a play around with it. Um, so yeah, this isn't perfect, but obviously you can just tinker around with it until you get it how you want it to look. Okay, next I'm going to show you guys some of my old uni work from when I first started using GIS. Um, most of these have flaws with them, uh, so I'm going to show them to you so hopefully you won't fall into the same traps that I did. Um, firstly, this map. If you remember when I was talking about people reading maps from left to right, first thing in the top left hand corner, North Arrow. 
That's kind. Of, it's not the kind of information you want people being drawn to straight away. You'd want them to see the title so they know know what the map's about. Otherwise, this map's quite good. The uh, map's the main fill of the screen, and if you look in the legends, the colours that I've used in the cap for the categories match quite well to the categories that they're supposed to. So it's easy for someone to look at it and recognise that the blue areas are rivers. Uh, this second map um, was one of the first I created. Um, well, as you can see, I've used OS map as a background. If you're going to use OS maps and things like such things as a background, um, make sure you get the right scale. Uh, this is obviously far too detailed a scale, and you can't really see anything important at all. It just looks a mess. Uh, this map, if you look at the size of the legend, it's far too big and intrusive. If you look, I think it's got about 14 categories of roads. These should have been um, joined joined together into about five categories, such as A roads, B roads, minor roads, etc. Uh, it's also got, in the legend up here, it's got a, a thing that just says all of the values. Uh, you don't, you don't want to leave things like this in your legend. To remove that, if you go to the table of contents in ArcGIS and press F2 on the bit that you want to remove, and just delete the writing, That'll get rid of it from your legend. Uh, final thing that's wrong with this map is that there is a different coloured section down here within the urban zone. Um, this isn't on the legend. It should be. I know that this is sort of like an island within the urban area, but it should be the same colour as the background colour. Obviously I've not got the colour quite right, and you really need to get these things right to produce an effective map. Again, this one uh, too many categories in the legend. As you can see, the colours are all bunched up in quite a small area, and there's a huge expanse of this green. It would have been much more effective to have perhaps five categories, so you get a better spread of the colours, and it'd be much more easy to interpret. This map, this one has a couple of faults with it as well. As you can see, I did pair the, um, the roads data down into four main categories, which is good. However, the colour scheme is wrong. You shouldn't ever, you shouldn't really use black and white if possible. Black tends to um, signal no data, as does white. Um, so you really want to avoid black and white if possible. Uh, additionally, it's good cartographic practice to have the darker colours as the higher values and vice versa. So this map, the colour scheme is going the wrong way effectively. You want to try and stick to these good cartographic practices, especially if you've been using the same sort of um, darker colours for higher values throughout your project. Uh, this one is pretty horrendous actually. Um, the green and blue background layer I believe is a view shed and it hasn't been clipped to the study area. Um, if you're unsure of how to do this I do have another video up showing you how to use the clip feature in ArcGIS 10. It's important that you don't have things like this on your map, it just makes it look unsightly. Additionally, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but the colours within the actual map, the bit of the useful bit of the map itself, are distorted because of transparency that I've put on the uh, the boundary data. So the colours don't match that in the legend. Uh, this isn't good. Uh, you really should have everything in the legend matching up perfectly to what's in the map. Uh, to do this, I would ha just have to change the transparency to 100% as opposed to uh, 50% or whatever I've used here. This one again, this one does look quite professional. However, if you look closely around the border, it almost has two borders. Uh, this can become confusing for people, and if you can, avoid it. The reason it's like that is because I used a hillshade as a background. The hillshade's not actually doing anything, it just thought it'd make it look good. Uh, so, yeah, so don't use it if it's not necessary because it has created almost like a double border. Additionally, if anyone was looking at this map as a standalone piece of work, um, the figures that I've got in the legend don't really mean anything, and I haven't really explained it in the figure caption either. Um, it would have been much better for me to replace the number values with a, a written description so people can look at it and understand immediately which areas are high, which areas are low, things like that. Okay, this final map, this is the one I produced for my dissertation. It's an index of relative disadvantage. Um, as you can see, it's quite plain, but I think that's to its advantage. Um, there's nothing clutter in it. The map is the real main focus. Um, up in the top left, we've got the title and 
bottom left we've got the legends, that's what people are going to see first. And things like the North Arrow and the Scale Bar, they're off to the right and the doors at the bottom, because they're less important. Um, if I had to critique this map, um, because it was part of a project, um, it doesn't really have any description, it was in a figure caption. So I would, I would add a description of what it's actually showing and how it was produced. Um, you should also add um, the projection and where you got your data from as well, if it's a standalone map. Just so that people can look at it and understand where you've got your data from and how you've used it. Um, additionally, um, the figures I've got in the legend here, they don't really mean anything without description. So I would change these to, to read low disadvantage and high disadvantage, just so that anybody looking at it could understand what the different colours mean. Um, hopefully this has given you an insight into what makes a good and a bad map. I hope this helps you. Um, hopefully you won't fall into the same pitfalls that I did in some of my coursework. Okay, finally, if you want a bit more inspiration of how to produce uh, decent looking maps, I, my advice would be to just search online and just take ideas from other people. Um, journals are particularly good. Um, especially if you get uh, really up to date ones because you can see um, usually the current software and how, and how you can make things um, look in that. I'm going to provide a link in the description to something called Colour Brewer. Uh, this is a website which uh, helps you choose suitable colours um, for your maps uh, depending on what they're trying to show. I uh, hope this has been of some use to you and hopes, I hope it helps you avoid some of the pitfalls that I fell into. Uh, thanks for watching.